It's the little things that makes movies much more memorable. And yes, that includes films with characters wearing capes and spandex. Finally. What's up guys? Welcome back to Screen Lab. And today, we will be showing you 8 small details in superhero movies that were more important than you thought. Before we begin, may we remind you that this video contains massive spoilers. Here we go. Bring it down hard! Number 1. The Sinister Six We start up our list with one of the best Marvel hidden easter eggs that will shape the future of the MCU, particularly the next heavily rumored Sinister Six slash Multiverse Spider-Man film. Aside from the X-Men, Spider-Man has probably the best rogue gallery in the entire Marvel comics. In fact, the villains have become so popular in the comics that Stan Lee created a team of Spidey's most iconic villains called the Sinister Six and featured them in the 1964 issue of The Amazing Spider-Man. The original team featured Vulture, Mysterio, Electro, Craven the Hunter, Sandman, and Dr. Octopus. Let's talk. After the failed attempt to bring the Sinister Six to the big screen back in 2016, Sony looks to try again with a new Spidey trilogy, but now with the help of Marvel Studios. During the end credit scene in Spider-Man Homecoming, we see Michael Mando's Mac Gargan handing an offer to the now incarcerated Vulture, played by Michael Keaton, to take out the young web slinger. He'd already be dead. And if there's any indication which villain Gargan transform into in the upcoming Spider-Man sequel, his neck tattoo resembling a scorpion may have revealed a possible teaser. Although not an original member of the Sinister Six, Scorpion is one of those villains that keep popping out every now and then. Like a pimple, then you deserve to be eliminated like one. Together with Green Goblin, Lizard, and Morbius, which apparently has his own live-action film set for release in 2021. If that's not enough, Jamie Foxx, who portrayed Electro in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, is also heavily rumored to reprise his role in the upcoming film. A world without Spider-Man. At this rate, we're not only getting a Sinister Six movie, but a Spider-Man multiverse movie as well. Here's hoping that Tom Hardy's Venom, together with former web-slingers Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, will be making a glorious cameo. There can't be two Spider-Men. Let's take them both in! Number 2. Wonder Woman's Father Much like Marvel Comics, DC stories exist in multiple timelines. This is especially true when it comes to Wonder Woman's father, who in three timelines is the biological daughter of either Zeus, Hercules, or Hades. Diana's dad wasn't mentioned in 2017's Wonder Woman, but we may have gotten a huge clue in Justice League, which was released a few months later. They are our. In a flashback scene, we see Steppenwolf's army go up against the combined forces of Amazonians, Atlanteans, and a Green Lantern Corps. The good guys seem to be aided by the gods of Olympus as well, with Artemis, Ares, and the god of the sky himself, Zeus, all taking turns at fighting Steppenwolf. Although we may never see a Wonder Woman Zeus tag team match in the future, at least we got to see a glimpse of how powerful Diana's father truly is. Number 3. Howard the Duck. <laughs> but that's not us! In a universe filled with homicidal aliens and planet-destroying demigods, Howard the Duck is one of the more refreshing yet obscure characters that Marvel Comics has ever created. I'm not in a real good mood tonight, Ginger. He made his first appearance in Adventure Into Fear way back in 1973, and it wasn't long before he starred in his own comic book series. Unlike his Disney counterpart, Donald Duck, Howard isn't the type that will sing your kids to sleep, nor the type who'll help you with your groceries. I don't drink out of bowls. You got a beer? He's an ill-tempered, tough-talking, and beer-drinking anti-hero who never hesitates to pull the trigger when things don't go his way. I bite your face, you're a dead man, Ginger! He also possesses a little bit of magic at one point after becoming Doctor Strange's apprentice. 
Notwithstanding the critically panned 1986 Howard the Duck movie, the MCU version of Howard made his first appearance in the first Guardians of the Galaxy during the film's end credits, drinking tequila alongside The Collector. He again made a short cameo in Avengers Endgame, wielding a blaster as he prepares to go into battle against Thanos' forces. Howard the Duck may not join any superhero team anytime soon, but it's still great to see the MCU acknowledging one of their classic comic book characters. Number 4. Natasha's Necklace Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton's relationship is one of the best BFF stories in the entire MCU. We first saw the pair in 2012's Avengers, fending off Loki's army while reminiscing about their past adventures in Budapest. I remember Budapest very differently. Whatever that may be. It would end in heartbreak during Avengers Endgame, as Natasha sacrificed her life so Clint could obtain the Soul Stone, resulting in the Avengers eventually beating Thanos. It's not surprising that aside from Bruce Banner, it was Clint who took Natasha's death the hardest. Throughout the four films, we've the spy duo together, it seems that there isn't a scene where we don't see them punch or kick their way out of trouble. But with all the chaos, it's the subtle moments that makes us care for both of them. If you watched Captain America Civil War and Avengers Endgame, you may have noticed Natasha wearing a specific type of necklace. Zoom it in and you'll see that the necklace actually resembles the shape of an arrow. Whether Clint gave the necklace or not is up for discussion, but it doesn't remove the fact that it was a heartwarming gesture on Natasha's part, further cementing that the two have always had a strong relationship even before the events of Avengers. Save your life, you idiot. Yeah, well, I don't want you to. Still with us? Make sure to watch until the end of the video, as we will be discussing the small Avengers Age of Ultron detail that actually becomes the defining moment for Captain America in future films. Number 5. Thomas and Martha Wayne in Watchmen Watchmen is a 2009 movie based on Alan Moore's graphic novel of the same name. Although reviews were mixed upon its release, critics and fans alike have warmed up to it in recent years. It's now considered as one of the best superhero films of all time. During the movie, we see a number of easter eggs that eagle-eyed viewers will surely have noticed, specifically the opening scene featuring Thomas Wayne, Martha Wayne, and Joe Chill. But instead of getting killed for the 100th time by the same person, the Waynes are saved by one of the Watchmen's original members, Night Owl. Warner Brothers owns the rights to both Watchmen and DC. I really like being alive. But fans may have to wait longer for Superman vs. Dr. Manhattan or Batman vs. Ozymandias as there are currently no talks regarding a crossover. Because you like me. I don't. Watchmen is tagged by many to be Zack Snyder's best movie outside of 300 and Dawn of the Dead. Although a good number of fans loved its work during his more recent DCEU films, it's quite unfortunate that a good number of fans hated the movies as well. Although it's not his fault that he stepped away from filming Justice League due to personal reasons. Snyder will get a chance to finish what he started as the film now officially titled Zack Snyder's Justice League will be releasing exclusively on HBO Max in September 2021. Glad I didn't miss this. So am I. And number six. Black Panther and Namor teasers. When Kevin Feige took over Marvel Studios in 2007, he envisioned that every movie, every character, and every story would occur in a single timeline. In a universe as vast as Marvel, planning two to three years ahead is considered the best option. But at that time, Hollywood was not a fan of superhero movies. If I move on, who does this? Maybe it doesn't need to be done. Similarly, actors also did not want to be glued to a single role for multiple years. Nonetheless, Feige took the chance. And after 23 movies and more than $22.5 billion in box office revenue, it's safe to say that his plan eventually panned out. What just happened? We won. <sighs> All right, good job, guys. Teasters have always been a commonplace in every MCU film since 2008's Iron Man. Nick Fury, director of SHIELD. 
And if you managed to stay inside a cinema until the end credits, you might have remembered getting all excited as Nick Fury started talking about the Avengers Initiative. Fast forward to 2010's Iron Man 2, although the teaser that got people talking was related to Captain America's shield, there was one blink and you miss it moment that occurred toward the film's ending. In the scene where we see Fury and Tony Stark debating on whether Tony should be on the team, the shield map behind them highlights two very interesting locations. The two locations are actually Wakanda and Atlantis not to be confused with DC's own underwater empire. Wakanda needs no further explanation. It played a big part in the last two Avengers movies and will remain that way as new characters are introduced in future MCU films. Atlantis, on the other hand, is something that may not be familiar with casual fans or fans who haven't read the comics. For those of you who don't know, Atlantis is the homeworld of Marvel's first mutant, Namor. Coincidentally, Namor and Black Panther have history in the comics, particularly when the underwater mutant gets mind-controlled by the Phoenix Force and single-handedly destroys Wakanda. Although, there isn't any concrete news of Namor getting his own solo film, it has been heavily rumored that he will be appearing in the Black Panther sequel and future MCU films. Move over, Aquaman! The true king of Atlantis has arrived. The ocean's rage. And they came. They came. Number 7. Robin's Suit. Dawn of Justice may not sit well with most fans, but there's no denying that it still produced some fantastic scenes, including Wonder Woman making her debut and Batman beating the living daylights out of Superman. There's also one particular scene occurring in the earlier part of the movie that casual fans may have ignored entirely. Bruce Wayne looking dejected while staring at the Robin suit spray-painted with the words, Joke's on you, Batman. For those who haven't read the comics or haven't watched the Batman animated movies in the 90s and early 2000s, the Robin suit has been donned by numerous characters, particularly Jason Todd. I'm not asking you to kick in with me. Jason is killed brutally by the Joker. A? In the 1988 graphic novel, Batman, Death in the Family. While he nearly gets beaten to death by the Joker again in the 2010 animated film, Batman, Under the Red Hood. Jason's faith is definitely one of the saddest moments in the entire history of the DC Universe. And knowing that his death also occurs in the DCEU makes it even more heartbreaking. Jason. Although, it will be difficult to relive Jason's death on the big screen, seeing him and or Dick Grayson taking down Gotham's most wanted and future live-action Batman films would definitely be very compelling. <sighs> and number 8. Cap was always worthy. Captain America wielding Mjolnir is undeniably one of the greatest moments in the MCU's entire 12-year history. As Thanos nearly stabs Thor with Stormbreaker, Mjolnir flies through and hits the Mad Titan in the head. We then see that the magical hammer gets called upon by another worthy hero, Steve Rogers. But we did it so that people could be free. The talk of Captain America being able to wield Mjolnir began as early as 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron. Captain America, God's righteous man. In the famous scene, we see our heroes trying to lift Mjolnir. Everyone failed miserably. But it should be remembered that even though Rogers didn't lift the hammer, he was the only one who managed to move it. Since then, Cap being worthy was a topic that was never discussed up until Endgame. With Captain America's Civil War even portraying Rogers as somewhat a villain as he goes underground and even hides from Tony that his parents were actually killed by a mind-controlled Bucky. Despite the rumors suggesting that Cap wasn't able to lift Mjolnir because of Bucky's secret, Endgame directors Joe and Anthony Russo confirmed in a recent interview that Cap was always worthy. We may have started that yeah. conspiracy. We, we, Where... subs we subscribe to that theory. Yes. 
They further added that Cap decided not to completely lift the hammer in Edge of Ultron out of respect for the God of Thunder. You're not worthy. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's still a full circle moment for one of the most loved characters in the MCU. And we're still hoping that someday we'll again see a shield and hammer wielding Captain America fan of baddies. Most probably in an alternate universe. Are you crying? So there you have it. Do you think these small details actually bear any importance in the movies? Leave a comment down below. If you like this video, make sure to also watch the top 10 Avengers movie moments only MCU geeks notice. What are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Don't forget to like and share the video as well as subscribe to ScreenLab at taste of your favorite. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.